Hey guys, what is up from Cameo and today we're trying something new. So um, if you can't tell by the title or by you know picture on the screen, I'm doing a podcast. I am, I'm starting a podcast and I you know I'm just kinda like I want to do this, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so why not try it? See how it goes. So, you know, without further ado, welcome to the Cameo Show where we talk about anything and everything. And it's kind of just me talking for my my uh, goal is 30 minutes, and hopefully you know we can make this flow a little bit better. We can maybe increase the length to an hour if that is appealing, or you know maybe I won't end up doing this podcast in a month from now or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll do. I think it will be a weekly thing. Uh, you know, I'll be able to bring on guests and do all that kind of stuff. So. That is why I'm doing this podcast. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, and you know, I just want to see how it goes. So, for the first episode of the Cameo Show, what we have lined up is we have some discussion stuff. Um, I have not researched any news, but I have some ideas I want to, um, you know, kind of talk about and just have some topics. Just want to kind of flow for half an hour of talking. So, what we have uh, first on the agenda is talking about G Fuel now. If you don't know what G Fuel is, it is a powder. It is a um, energy supplement powder that you mix with water. You mix with 12 to 16 ounces of water, and then you have an energy drink. It's very healthy for you. It has um, most flavors have 10 calories. I believe two or three of them have 25, just because the ingredients in them. Um, you know, basically because they're like. I know the one that has 25, 100% is made up of like three or four different fruits. So that's why the calories are more because, you know, to have that sweet fruit taste, you got to have more stuff in it. And that's just why. But I mean, still 10 to 25 calories is still nothing compared to, you know, anything else that you eat or drink besides water. And, you know, even though it has a low amount of calories, it is very good for you. It has tons of vitamins and it really helps you when it comes to, you know, staying awake and staying alert and focused. Um, I just had some actually before I started recording this. I drank some and I started thinking about what I'm going to do tonight before I start practicing for MLG Columbus, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? Let's give this podcast thing a go. We'll see what happens. So. Uh, here I am, we're talking about G Fuel, and uh, for me, I'm a huge fan of G Fuel. Now, I am sponsored by West Coast Chill. They're an energy drink company. They are not G Fuel, but I'm talking about G Fuel uh, from a review perspective, and uh, honestly, I think their product is fantastic. I think G Fuel is a great thing. I, You know, if, if you don't like the idea or you don't like the you know, like the media around Monster or Red Bull, you know, saying it's really bad for you, uh, but you still want, you know, energy drink, you still need an energy drink, uh, you know, instead of having coffee every single day, you could drink G Fuel. It's very healthy for you. It's a very good uh, replacement to coffee or any other energy drink for that matter. It's a very good replacement for Monster or Red Bull or whatever other energy drink you drink. Uh, it's very healthy for you. But, you know, on that matter of energy drinks, like I said, I am sponsored by West Coast Chill. West Coast Chill has a fantastic energy drink product. I love their stuff. They're a fantastic sponsor too. You know, they send us uh, so many, so much free product, and I can't wait to represent them at a LAN event coming up in a week or so. So, um, like I said, West Coast Chill, fantastic company. I love West Coast Chill, but from a review perspective. G Fuel, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I have tried every single flavor of G Fuel that's out so far. Today, um, a new flavor of G Fuel has come out called Green Apple. I ordered that. I will be trying that as soon as it gets to my house. As soon as they start shipping those, I'll get it and I'm going to try it. But I think it's going to be, you know, kind of a sourish taste, kind of like the Green Apple Powerade flavors, I feel like it's going to taste like. And I kind of hope it does. I love the. Green Apple Powerade, and if it does taste like that, that'll be awesome. Uh, G Fuel, <laughs> I mean, I've been a huge fan of G Fuel for a long time, and you know, even though I am sponsored by West Coast Chill, I love their product as well. G Fuel is a great thing to have in your life, I think. G Fuel's great. Now, it is a bit expensive, and uh, it's uh, I have it's like around a dollar per serving or a dollar fifty per serving if you buy, you know individual stick packs so if you buy a tub it's about a dollar per serving and i know some of this is like an advertisement but 
I'm just talking about G Fuel and the whole idea around it. So, you know, if you want to buy G Fuel, I guess I'll put a link in the description. Or if you want to buy some West Coast Chill, there will be a link in the description to that as well. So, back to the topic of G Fuel. People uh, will drink G Fuel, you know, kind of be like, uh, I don't know if this is actually an energy drink. They'll drink it and then they'll fall asleep. And I don't really think that's a, that's a true um, true statement towards G Fuel because when people drink G Fuel and then fall asleep, you know, that's going to happen whether you have G Fuel or Monster or Red Bull or West Coast Chill or coffee. You know, if you drink something and then fall right asleep, like, I mean, that's not the energy drinks fall. That's your fault. You're way too tired. You know, you're sleep deprived. That's why your body's falling asleep. And when you wake up, you're going to have all that energy from that drink that you had. So, um, you know, people have tried, some of my friends have tried G Fuel and they said, you know, it didn't work at all. I fell asleep in like 15 minutes and that's just completely not true. It, it, the G Fuel and you falling asleep are not related at all. It's you being sleep deprived or, you know, whoever being sleep deprived. That's why, uh, you know, when you drink G Fuel and you're, you know, you're like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm not staying awake. It's not, you know, the energy drink's fault. It's your fault because you are lacking sleep and that is why you cannot stay awake. Now, if you have, you know, a good amount of sleep, you have, you know, eight, nine hours of sleep, even seven, seven to, you know, nine hours of sleep at night, you know, you're getting a good, healthy amount of sleep and then you drink G Fuel because you're starting to crash around four o'clock like me, you know, G Fuel works. And for me, I usually don't drink it on school nights because if I drink it at like four o'clock when I'm getting home, I'm not going to sleep till like 11:30 or midnight, so that can throw off my sleep schedule. I don't want that because I'm usually waking up at 6:30, so you know I don't, I don't need G Fuel messing up my sleep schedule. But G Fuel works. I mean, it really does, and I feel <laughs> so focused when I drink G Fuel. And when I drink G Fuel at like four o'clock on a school night, you know, after I have everything done, I'm laying in bed trying to wind down and go to sleep. I'm, you know, there's so many thoughts going through my head. It's, um, it's, it's crazy just to think about because, you know, when I go to sleep, usually, I mean, I still have tons of thoughts in my head and I am, you know, just thinking about a ton of stuff, especially if I'm stressed, I'll be thinking about a ton of stuff and I'll get a bunch of ideas and, you know, just a ton of, just a ton of different thoughts flowing to my head at once. So but when G Fuel, you know, makes that go even faster, that process go even faster. And it's, I mean, I'm making it sound like it's, you know, some kind of like super drink, like Adderall or something, like Adderall in a drink. And that's not what it is. It's, yeah, it's a caffeine supplement. It's not really caffeine. I don't know how much caffeine's in here, but it's uh, it's an energy supplement and it works. It really does. It's, uh, it's, you know, it was produced for gaming originally, a G Fuel gaming fuel, but they also have like a pre-workout formula, which tastes great too, and it works really well. Uh, you know, people knock Game Labs products because they don't work, and the reason people say they don't work is because they have other stuff going on in their lives that are making them not be able to enjoy like the effects of G Fuel. And I'm making it sound like a drug again, but it really isn't. It's just you know, it's just a product that tastes great and has lasting effect. Just like, you know, coffee or Red Bull or Monster, G Fuel gives you that energy to, you know, do whatever you need to do in the day, especially when you start crashing around, you know, two, three o'clock. Um, you know, G Fuel hypes you back up and you're ready to go. So for me, I love drinking G Fuel on the weekends, especially, you know, uh, if I'm about to game for a long night, you know, I'll, I'll make some G Fuel, drink some G Fuel, and we'll be good. Uh, you know, I'm, I should say, you know, the negatives to G Fuel as well, because I'm hyping it up. Um, there is one negative I have uh, with G Fuel. I guess there's two negatives I have with G Fuel. Ah, okay, we'll make it three. We'll make it three. Uh, one of them is the price. You know, price is there. It's a little expensive. Um, I mean, it's cheaper than Red Bull or Monster if you think about it. Because um, Red Bull or Monster costs like two fifty three dollars for a can of it, and so it's like a serving. Where G Fuel costs around a dollar, dollar twenty five, dollar fifty a serving, and but you know you're not buying Monster or Red Bull in forty serving, you know bunches usually unless you're 
buying in bulk for whatever reason because you drink Red Bull or Monster on the daily. Uh, G Fuel, you're buying in bulk, so you're buying you know a tub, 40 servings of it, and that's around forty dollars plus shipping. Use a coupon code; it's about forty bucks. So, you know, forty bucks is a lot to drop on an energy drink um, that you know you may you might potentially not like, but you just gotta think about it's forty servings. So you're gonna be able to make forty glasses of it and have you know energy and focus. 40 times, which is a lot. Like, you're not drinking... I mean, you could drink this daily. You could. If if you want to replace coffee with G Fuel, you definitely could. And the thing I like about G Fuel is it doesn't have that crash after, you know, when you drink coffee. Like, if you drink like, a cup of coffee a couple hours after, like, for me, it's about five, six hours after. You know, you're starting to get crash, and you're crashing really hard. At least I do. Like, I crash, like, so hard, and I'm just like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. There's just no coming back from that crash even if I drink G Fuel, but G Fuel doesn't really have that. You know, it, it wears off and you can feel it wear off, but you're not crashing. You're not crashing like you do with coffee at all or, um, you know, any other energy drink. You have a hard crash. You could have the jitters. doesn't happen with G Fuel. So I guess another positive doesn't really have that crash, which I, I hate so much with coffee and Monster and Red Bull. Just, you just have that crash and you just feel awful, which, you know, which can be fixed with another cop of another cup of coffee but you know that means you're going to crash five hours later that's just not good not good so another negative with g fuel is that it uh it, it can dry out and i guess that's the same with like any powdered substance any powdered food or you know drink mix it can dry out uh especially in a tub if you don't seal it all the way and you're in a dry environment like my room is so dry I really need like a humidifier in here because that's probably not good for all these electronics. But um, you know, it, it can dry out and then it starts crystallizing inside the th- inside the uh, tub, and then it just doesn't mix when you put it into the um, into the shaker cup or water bottle. It just doesn't mix, which can be a problem. You know, it's you're getting you know product that's not uh, it's not doing what it's supposed to. It's not mixing up, so you know that could affect your um, I guess your enjoyment with the product and you're not going to be happy when you see, you know, little like chunks floating around in your drink and you're like, Hey, it doesn't mix. Well, I don't like G fuel because they're not, it doesn't do what it's supposed to. It's not mixing well. It's not a good, uh, powdered substance. So that can happen. Drying out is a problem. It really is. Um, but if you seal, if you seal the tubs, the tubs are fine. Uh, as long as you leave a little silicone thing in there, and you just, uh, or like silicone gel or whatever, that, that little free candy in there, uh, as long as you leave that in there and you seal it up good, it should be fine. The only thing that has major problems are the stick packs, uh, especially if you leave it in like a backpack for a long time in a zipper, it dries out really fast. Um, you can get it like undry, it just like, it gets all stuck together, you just gotta kind of like, um, kind of a ketchup packet, like, uh, flick it around a little bit and then you'll be good. And it'll be fine. It won't be as, you know, it won't be as uh, powdered as, you know, other, you know, like in a tub. But it's, you know, it's still G Fuel and it still makes it fine. So uh, I guess it's a negative, but it's very easy to fix negative. So I wouldn't really use that as a reason to not try G Fuel. Um, you know, if you don't drink it regularly it's not gonna get super bad where you get to a point where you can't drink it it's just gonna be a little dry it's gonna require a little extra work to mix it so you know that's just I want to put that out there and then the last thing about G Fuel that I personally don't like um, it's just personal experience and uh, something that I'm pretty sure all of my friends and I have all experienced um, at one point or another and if they haven't they haven't tried all flavors of G Fuel uh, like I said, I have all, I've tried all flavors of G Fuel, and the watermelon flavor. Me and uh, me and this friend I have online, uh, Icon Poison, he or IV Poison or whatever he's going by nowadays, Poison. He uh, he and I both we have like stomach issues when we drink watermelon G Fuel. It's I don't know, like when I when I drink it, it doesn't taste terrible. It's not my favorite flavor. Watermelon G Fuel it tastes like. Uh, I don't know, just had a really overpowering watermelon taste. I'm just not a fan of, to be completely honest with you. But 
I mean, it, it tastes okay. It tastes like watermelon. That's what it's supposed to. But, you know, a couple hours after you drink it, I'm, I'm having like stomach problems. My stomach hurts really bad. And I'm constantly going to the bathroom to go number two because it's just like, I don't know. It's 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 like it's got like laxatives in it or something. I'm not, I mean, I've had laxatives before. And it's not that, it's not as intense as laxatives, but it's, it's just not, it's not doing what it's supposed to, you know, a drink is not supposed to do that to you. And it's happened to me constantly with watermelon. I think I've only had one time where it didn't do that. And, uh, I'm not sure why it didn't. I'm happy it didn't, but I'm not sure why. So usually watermelon is kept out of the mix, um, in my G fuel rotation. Usually, um, even if I'm craving the watermelon flavor, I'll settle with like a phase berry and just go with, you know, a similar taste, but not the, uh, not the effects that watermelon have the extra effects that watermelon has. So watermelon, in my opinion, is not good. Icon poison also agrees. Watermelon is not good. It causes, you know, stomach problems and digestive problems. I'm not really sure why. Um, but me, Icon Poison, a couple of my friends have also had that problem with watermelon. Uh, and I have a ton of watermelon. I have a tub and a stick pack of watermelon. So I have a lot of watermelon that if someone enjoys watermelon a lot, you know, I could possibly send it to them. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with my watermelon yet. So watermelon is uh, is definitely a no-go for me. Uh, but, you know, all the other flavors, blue ice is really good. Uh, it's got a different taste, and, you know, either you love it or you hate it. Um, lemon lime tastes like, uh, like what you'd think, lemon lime. Pink lemonade tastes like pink lemonade. Peach mango is really good. I love the taste of it. It has a really good effect. I feel like peach mango actually works the best um, out of all of them. Phase berry tastes great, works good. Uh, fruit punch tastes great, works good. Like I said, blue ice tastes great, works good. At least in my opinion, you know, either you love it or you hate it. Either way, still works good. And I feel like I'm forgetting a flavor of G Fuel. I don't think so. I don't think I'm forgetting one, actually. Uh, but yeah, all those are delicious flavors. Um, besides watermelon, they're all good, you know, all in their own way. And then honey badger is a whole different story. Honey badger is a very similar thing. They, um, you know, they come in tubs or sticks. And for me, honey badger is a completely different thing. Uh, it's, it's more watered down. It tastes more like a, like a, like a flavored water. Like if you go to like a gas station and you buy like one of those Aquafina flavor blast things, it tastes a lot like one of those. Uh, it, and I've tried wild berry and the, uh, lemon lime, both versions of it. And they both taste pretty good. You know, it's a unique flavor. So, you know, either you're going to love it or you hate it, just like G Fuel, but um, Honey Badger is a completely different story. So, I think I'm going to wrap up my G Fuel talk. And if you've never tried G Fuel yet, I really recommend you do. On their website, you can buy, I believe it's like a starter pack or something, $7.50. You get a couple stick packs. Uh, I'm not sure if you pay shipping or if it's free shipping. If it's shipping, it's really cheap. So, if you haven't tried it yet, I would really recommend you try G Fuel and if you have a vitamin shop near you, I do believe it's carried in vitamin shops. At least their PTF uh, pre-training formula is. I'm not sure about actual G Fuel, but you know, pick some up if you can. It's a very good product. You know, you should definitely try it. But if you are on the East Coast, I believe, and you have a 7-Eleven near you, go pick up some West Coast Chill. Go try some West Coast Chill. It's a very good product. Very good company. They're a very generous company. They are uh, a sponsor of the Cleveland Cavaliers, actually. So West Coast Chill is also a great product. So to wrap up energy drink talk, G Fuel is good. Try, you know, try all of them. Even watermelon, you may have a bad experience with it, but just because you have a bad experience with one flavor doesn't mean, you know, you'll have a bad experience with all of them. Same thing with Monster or Red Bull. But, you know, I've switched from drinking Monster and Red Bull to strictly G Fuel and West Coast Chill. Also, try West Coast Chill. West Coast Chill is delicious. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to their website. I think you can buy it online. I'm not 100% on that. I know you can buy G Fuel online, so there'll be links in the description to both of those. Uh, if you want to buy some, I really recommend it. So, wrapping up energy, energy Drink Talk now, we are moving on to a very... Um, you know, it's very a thought. It's a thought-provoking question, and uh, you know, there's two sides of it, 
and I think, uh, you know, it's it's a hard, you know, they're, they're correlated somewhat. So I'm just gonna dig right in. The first question is, um, you know, if you had to relive one day for the rest of your life, what day would it be? As you know, it's a very thought-provoking question. You gotta think deep about that because. For me, I'm only 15. I'm almost 16 years old. I'm like a couple months away from being 16. So I've lived, you know, thousands and thousands of days. And for people who are older, they've lived even more days. They've lived like tens of thousands of days. And I don't even know if 100,000, hundreds of thousands of days. I'm not really sure. I'm going to do the math real quick um, to do that, to see how many days that is. But, you know, either way, that's a ton of days that you've lived in your life, and you don't even remember all of them. Like, there's so many days in your life. Okay, so I just did the math, and you cannot hit 100,000 days unless you're 260 or 273 years old. But as uh, 15, I've lived about, you know, 5,500 days, and I don't remember all of them. I definitely don't remember the ones as I was younger, you know, like an infant. Um, I definitely don't remember those, but I do remember a lot of days in my life, and it's hard to choose one. If I were to live, relive one day for the rest of my life, um, I think it would have to be a day I either spent with my family or a day I spent with my friends, and I don't really know what to choose. You know, I, my friends are awesome. I love my friends. I love spending time with my friends. You know, every time I hang out with my friends, it's a great time. And, you know, there's better times than others. Like, you know, there's there's times where it's just like a fantastic night. There's so many people, so many, you know, just so much fun in one night. There's also the times where, you know, you're hanging out with your friends and it's just like you and a couple other friends. You're just kind of hanging out, having a good time, chilling at someone's house. You know, it's just a good time as well. There's also times when you're with family and it's, you know, you're just having a blast with your family. And I don't really know which one is better, but if I were to relive one day for the rest of my life, I think it would have to be um, probably one of the parties I went to back in... Um, the summer before freshman year of high school, um, you know, obviously it wasn't like a like a hardcore like drinking, doing drugs party. It was just you know we we were gonna be freshmen. Like my whole, you know, like all my friends were gonna be freshmen. I was gonna be a freshman in high school. So, you know, we were just kind of hanging out. We were having a good time. It was a pool party, and I think I'd have to relive that day. That day was a fantastic day. Um, I don't even know if it not. I don't know what to see. I don't know what to decide because there were so many good times that summer. Um, so I don't know if I could choose one day, but it would definitely be one of the um, one of the times I spent time with my friends um, at uh, someone's house or you know at some event or somewhere, someplace in the summer of uh, summer before freshman year. It have to be, you know, one of the parties I went to that summer, just because it was a blast. You know, it was before one of my best friends moved away. Um, I guess he was here freshman year for most of it, but uh, you know, spent a ton of time with him. Spent a ton of time with uh, my with some other friends. I met new people. I got new friends. You know, I think it was that summer that I became really good friends with uh, some of my best friends now. So. I think it would have to be uh, sometime in that range. If I had to choose one day, I don't know if I could. Uh, I'd probably just, you know, throw all the options in a hat and pick one because a lot of them, you know, are just all good times. They all have their benefits. They all, you know, they all have the pros. They all have their cons. But I think that summer was probably my favorite summer so far. So if I had to relive one. Uh, one period of my life it would definitely be that summer over and over again that summer was so fun and uh the question relating to that one is kind of related um it's kind of kind of not so if you died tomorrow what would you want to be remembered for and you know this is a deep question it really is and it's kind of hard to think about because you don't really know you know what would, what would it be like if you died tomorrow 
and or if you died today, you know, what would people think tomorrow or what would happen? And it, it's something to think about because no one wants to think about death. And I, I hate thinking about death. It's a scary thing because I don't know what happens after death, you know, what what's going to happen to my friends and my family. You know, if, if I were to die and um, I know talking about death is kind of, I know like there's some things that could be like uh, like a suicidal warning and I'm not trying to, uh, not trying to like bring that upon myself. Uh, I'm just, you know, thinking like if there was some freak accident and I weren't here tomorrow, what would I want to be remembered for? You know, what would it be like tomorrow also? That's the other thing is what would it be like tomorrow um on a saturday and what would it be like monday like the first day of school where i'm not there what would it be like what would happen would it be a big deal or would you know life just carry on um now i'm not really sure and i don't want that to i don't want to experience that anytime soon i don't want to know um i mean if i could like go in like uh if i could like have like a hypothetical situation where that happened and experience it like from a third person view and just kind of see what happens uh like hypothetically that would be awesome i'd love to experience that but i don't want to like actually experience death until you know many many years from now like i'm hoping to be like 70 or 80 years old by the time uh i go but back to the question what would i want to be remembered for i'm not really sure uh you know i think that um, you know, I, I would love to be remembered as a, uh, YouTuber. I love doing YouTube. It's just, it's a hard thing to get started in, especially in a dying community like Call of Duty. Um, uh, so I, I may be switching, you know, community. That's why I'm trying this podcast out, you know, maybe I get into the podcasting community and, um, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. I'm not saying I'm going to switch communities, but you know, you always have to have that on your mind because YouTube's a completely changing thing. And we'll talk about that some other time, you know, how YouTube is not, is never guaranteed and uh, every day is not guaranteed. But I think, you know, I'm also really into esports right now. So I think that I'd like to be remembered as a, you know, a professional uh, esports player, you know, professional Call of Duty player or Halo player or, or, um, or you know, some professional gaming thing or you know i'd like to maybe be known as um a twitch streamer kind of related to youtube you know a popular twitch streamer or you know maybe as like the head of mlg or something i'd love to work for mlg at some day you know someday if playing doesn't work out or youtube and twitch don't work out i'd love to go work at mlg that way i'm still in the gaming community or umg or you know something in the gaming community when it comes to uh esports so what would I want to be remembered for? Uh, I want to be remembered for my career. You know, like whatever I did for my career, I'd love to be remembered for that. You know, if, if I was just, you know, some office worker working some, you know, just plain old office job, working in a cubicle every single day. I mean, I'm going to, I mean, my coworkers are going to remember me as that person. I don't really want to be remembered as that person. You know, that's just, it just sounds boring to me you know, being in an office every single day, selling paper or whatever it may be. I'm thinking of Dunder Mifflin right now from the office, but, you know, I don't really, I don't really know what I would want to be remembered for, but definitely my career, whatever my career is, I want to be remembered for that, uh, especially if it's, you know, something interesting like esports or YouTube or Twitch or something in the gaming or entertainment industry. I'd love to be remembered for that. Um, also, I'd love to be just remembered for me. I mean, like, just as a person in general, uh, people don't really think about, you know, how, like, their personality that much. And I'd love to be remembered for, you know, who I am and just kind of how I run things and everything like that. I don't really know how to explain it, but, you know, I just like, I would just like to be remembered, honestly. Like, if, if I were to die tomorrow, like, that, that's a big thing. And, you know, I would just not want people to forget about me. But if I were to die, you know, sometime in the future, like let's say 60 years from now, you know, or even if I if I become a pro 
gamer and uh, I retire at like age 30, which is about the time, 26, 28, 30. Um, all I can be remembered as, you know, the what like one of the greatest that whatever I did. So either an esports player or a YouTuber, just something, you know, remembered as you know, one of the greatest at that. So uh, I feel like that's the answer for a lot of people, you know, they want to be remembered for the thing they're interested in the most or whatever they believe will become their hobby one day or their even career. You know, they want to be remembered as one of the greats. Like if you ask uh, like a college football player or an NFL player, you know, they want to be remembered as one of the greats in the game. And that's, that's what I'm working at. So uh, kind of a dark question to think about. Uh, definitely don't want to experience death tomorrow, but if it were to happen, I would definitely want to be remembered for, um, you know, YouTube, even though my YouTube's small, my Twitch, even though my Twitch is small, and being um, a Halo player, you know, a Halo, a professional Halo player at a point uh, in my life, a competitive Call of Duty player, uh, you know, it's just, and me, you know, being me and just remembered as a person in general, so that's about all I can really think about right now, and I think that's where I'm going to end the show today, so I think this is going to be a reg like uh, a weekly basis, maybe two or three episodes a week, or just whenever I have time and want to record an episode, I'll do it, so that will be wrapping up the show, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the sponsors of this show in Defiant Gaming, Dino Grips, No Scope Glasses, aim controllers in west coast chill links to their websites will be down in the description below you can buy their products and you know help support defiant gaming and myself so thank you guys for watching i'm cameo and i'll see you guys next time